right, so so here's a little video uh, to show you how to do the uh, the 4x4 bypass or what's commonly known as the brown wire mod on the this is a 2008 so fourth gen Ford Explorer uh, this is the Eddie Bauer edition uh, this is a v6 um, and this has the 4x4 uh, auto system uh, this doesn't apply if you have all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive uh, but if you have the four-wheel drive auto this is how you bypass it now this system is always active uh, and if it detects any rear wheel slip or predicts there will be rear uh, wheel slip at all it engages the 4x4 system uh, it sends power down to the transfer case which engages uh, a clutch pack in there uh, and that engages the front drive shaft powering the front wheels um, now that's great from a safety perspective, uh, but it does seem to engage the four by four when it doesn't really need to, and it does it fairly often. Uh, the way that we bypass that is essentially we take the signal that would be coming out of the four by four module, which is embedded in the dashboard, uh, just behind the glove box here. Uh, and we interrupt the signal, we cut the wire that runs power down to the coil in the transfer case. Uh, so it, it cannot engage four by four. Now, if you wanted to permanently get rid of this system, you could just cut that wire, uh, tape the ends off and forget about it. Uh, but what I did here is I installed this toggle switch on that wire. Uh, and what this does is when the switch is in the red position, uh, that's on, and that will allow me to use the 4x4 modes just like stock, uh, like nothing changed. If I flip this, completely disables uh, the 4x4 system, so it won't automatically engage, and none of these buttons will do anything. Now, the way that we do this is down here in the passenger footwell, uh, we are looking at the underside of the glove box right now, uh, and this uh, this piece here, this is the 4x4 module, uh, controls the 4x4 functions and some other things. Uh, the brown connector, which is closest to the seat, um, closest to the passenger seat, uh, has a bunch of wires coming out of it, and coming out of it is this gray wire with an orange stripe on it. Now, uh, this is the wire that you're going to want. Uh, you're going to need to clip some of the uh, the electrical tape away uh, in order to gain access to it. And then you simply clip it, you strip the ends, and you splice on some wire, and you can run it to anywhere in the cab that you like. Uh, some people will put it inside of the glove box. I wanted it to be fairly readily accessible, so I mounted it here just below my HVAC controls. Um, and getting this panel off is fairly easy. Uh, you simply remove this panel, shift bezel, this comes out, uh, and then all of this just comes off. Uh, then I drilled a hole here and I ran my wires down. And because I know I'm going to, uh, get questions about it, uh, this is the tools and materials that you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need... A uh, 12 volt rocker switch. You can get these from any uh, hardware store or uh, automotive store. Um, you're going to need a pair of diagonal cutters or wire cutters. Um, flush cuts will work as well, and basically anything sharp that you can cut wire with. Uh, you will need some wire. I used this. Uh, well, now I can't remember what gauge it is, but I used uh, some of this uh, basically speaker wire, um, and I used about two feet of it. Um, I left it a little long uh, so that I can kind of tuck it up, uh, make it all tidy under there. You're going to need uh, wire cutters, crimpers, strippers. You can use either this style or I prefer the automatic wire strippers myself. Uh, you are going to need uh, wire terminals, um, uh, butt connectors is what you would typically call these. 
Uh, I'm using heat shrink versions. There's some that aren't heat shrink. Use whatever you like. You can solder the wires. This just makes it easier. Uh, you're going to need a socket set to remove the bolts in your center console. You're going to need some uh, trim removal tools to remove the trim and uh, center console panels. And finally, you will need a drill and a cone bit or a plain drill bit, the proper size for your switch in order to uh, make that hole. And here we are, I've got the truck turned on. Um, you can see I've got the system engaged. So now when I hit four by four high, four by four light comes on. Hit auto, turns off. Now, if I hit four by four high, the light is on. Now, if I hit my little switch here, turns off the system. It kills power to those clutches, disengages. Now, uh, you're probably not going to want to do this on the fly, uh, you know, while the vehicle's in motion. Um, and you definitely don't want to play with this switch while 4x4 low is engaged. Um, you could break something. Uh, I'm not liable if you damage your vehicle at all, but uh, that's how you perform this. Um, my other uh, Explorer that I did this modification to, I got about 1.5 miles per gallon uh, increase uh, in my fuel mileage with changing nothing in my driving style. So uh, that's nice. It also, you know, gives you peace of mind. You know, your uh, transfer case isn't going to be turning on and off on you while you're just driving on flat, dry ground, as tends to happen on these. I want to thank you for watching, and have a great day.